Hello everyone, this is Justin Mutlak from the KSARS project. Today I'll be talking about using Indie and Ecos under Windows. Here I have Windows 10, 64-bit. And while Indie protocol itself is pretty platform agnostic, the Indie library implementation I'm responsible for is tailored toward POSIX systems. So we're talking Linux, BSD, and OS X. So how do we get Indie and Ecos exactly running under Windows? Well, one method is to download Ecos Virtual Machine. It's a complete virtual machine available for all operating systems, including Windows. It's a 1.6 gigabyte file, which you can download. And here you can find all the information you need to know about the virtual machine, including the default username and password, which is ND. The MD5 checksum, which you can use to verify the integrity of the download plus other information. To run Ecos Virtual Machine under Windows, you need Oracle VirtualBox. And you can go to this uh, web page to get a free download of Oracle VirtualBox for any operating system for OS X or Windows. So here I downloaded this file over here. I downloaded already both files. Let's go ahead and start VirtualBox. So now we're running VirtualBox. And since Ecos Virtual Machine is a 64-bit machine, you need to enable the hardware virtualization in your BIOS. Otherwise, if you try to run Ecos VM, without the hardware virtualization setting in the BIOS, you will get a warning that you cannot run 64-bit machines on a 32-bit on virtual, virtual box. So please make sure to enable that before you start virtual box. So let's go ahead and import uh, Ecos here. So Ecos contains KSTARS, which is a desktop planetarium program. And it, uh, it includes many tools useful for astrophotography and observational astronomy, but the most important tool we're interested in is ECOS, which is the KSTARS astrophotography tool we're going to be using today. And it can control anything, starting from your just DSLR or camera, all, all, all the way uh, to a complete observatory. Here on the first time you run, you're going to get this error. Just click change network settings. Click OK, and then the error will be gone. You will not get it again. So let's just just waiting until Ecos Virtual Machine, which is based on Kubuntu long-term release, to start up. And I'll be trying to capture from my uh, Canon DSLR camera 600D. Okay, so here we have the desktop and here we have case stars. So let's go ahead and run that. So on the first one of case stars, you get the startup wizard. I'm just going to skip that for now. You can fill all the necessary information when you run it yourself. And now we need to make the Canon DSLR available to our virtual machine. Let me first actually turn it on. Okay, I turned it on, and now it's available on Windows. It was just detected on Windows, but I need to make it available on the virtual machine so that the virtual machine programs can access it. So I go here to Devices, USB, and here I can see Canon Digital Camera. If I click that, it'll be if it's if it's already attached to the virtual machine, you will see a check mark next to it. So now it's available but not attached. So let me click on it. And now it's attached to the virtual machine. And you can see here that the the uh, Ecos virtual machine detected the camera. Uh, while this is fine, it's better to permanently add it to the USB list so that every time the virtual machine starts up, it automatically attaches the uh, camera or whatever devices to the virtual machine. So we don't have to manually go here 
and uh, click it ourselves. So just to do this, click on the USB here and then let's add it. Click on Canon and now it's permanently added to the USB list. So now let's go ahead and click on Ecos icon here. By default we have a, a simulator uh, devices just for, for uh, illustration purposes. Let's add a new device profile here. Let's call it for example Canon. Let's go to CCD and select Canon DSLR. Let's save that. Second step is we start ND. ND started. Third step is we connect the devices. And here we get a warning that we need to set up the pixel size and other information in the image info tab. And this is important if you plan to use the um, ECOS asymmetry modulo or other modules within ECOS. It's, it's a good practice to put all the information here uh, as correct from your camera specifications. So you can put the settings, then go to options, configuration, and save them and then you will not be asked next time to change these settings they are now automatically saved so let's go to the ECOS capture module here and let's take a one second review and you'll see here there are lots of options uh, and there are um, a few tutorials on YouTube on how to use the ECOS module here we get our first capture this is in my living room so so this is now we got so now under under Windows 10 using the virtual machine I was able to access my DSLR camera so now this is one method let's uh, close case stars we don't need it anymore so I show you the other method which we can use if you go to Google Chrome here on the ECOS virtual machine and if you go here you have we have the indie server manager or indie web manager which is a method by which we start uh, our devices similar to what we did in ECOS. Here I already have uh, the Canon DSLR um, profile so if I start it now Indie Server is running on the virtual machine and it can uh, it's waiting for connections from any client such as ECOS or any external client if we go to the network icon here if we click here if you go to the right connection we can find if we go to the details we can find out the IP address of the virtual machine and now using the IP address and the port which is 7624 by default we can connect to the ND server running here as an example, let's use Pix Insight because they just recently released an Indie modulo to connect to uh, Indie. So if you go to the Process Explorer and you go to Indie, you'll find Indie Device Controller. Let's put the IP address of the virtual machine 149. Let's connect then let's connect the camera and then let's go back to the process explorer in DCCD frame here we select again the G4 to CCD and let's take a quick exposure of course if you want to take long exposures like 30 seconds or more you need to have your camera in the bulb or manual mode otherwise it's not going to take long exposures so here we have the um, a capture within within Pix Insight. You can use any client such as Ecos or Pix Insight. Or if you go to the India website, we ha there are many clients available on many platforms. But uh, I'd like also to talk about uh, a better method uh, to control your devices, which is to get Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a credit uh, card size single board computer that costs about thirty five dollars and you can and it runs Linux so you can use it along with a powered USB hub to control your devices so this can sit next to your equipment while then on your laptop or your desktop at home you can use ECOS virtual machine or Pix Insight or whatever client of your choosing to remotely control your devices over here 
So this is a highly recommended method. This is what I use to control my observatory. So you can get Raspberry Pi 3, as I said, for about $35. Of course, with the case and everything else, it's uh, maybe about 50 bucks. And uh, I'd recommend you can install any operating system on it. I'd recommend um, you use Ubuntu Mate for Raspberry Pi 3 because installing Indy on, on here is pretty easy since it's supported by the uh, by the PPA archive here. If you go here to Ubuntu, there are a few commands you can just add to your Ubuntu Mate installation and you'll get a full Indie environment fully updated whenever there is a new revision released. So this is the, the method that I personally prefer. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is how we use um, Indie and Ecos under Windows 10. You can either use the virtual machine or you can use the Indie Web Manager to start to start to manually start the the devices yourself. And uh, please let me know if you have any comments or uh, suggestions. And uh, cheers.